on the News Channel 5 Network, this is Inside Politics. Hello everyone, I'm News Channel 5's political analyst, Pat Nolan. Welcome to Inside Politics. The 111th Tennessee General Assembly meets for the first time next week. We've been talking to the membership and the leadership of that new legislature in recent Inside Politics show. Today that includes Senate, the new Senate minority, Democratic minority leader in the Senate, Jeff Yarborough. Senator Yarborough, welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me. Now, the number one responsibility for the legislature every year is to pass a balanced budget for Tennessee. Now, we've been blessed with a good economy, meaning that state tax revenues continue to grow. So what issues do you see in allocating the budget coming up this year? Do you think it's going to be a status quo budget? Well, I mean, I think the number one issue for the budget this year is you have a lot of new people working on it. You have a brand new administration, and as much as the partisan numbers didn't switch that much in the legislature, the personnel really did. And so you've got 30 new members of the House. Which is uh, one of the largest number, rookie classes ever. One of the largest rookie classes ever. You have new leadership in both chambers, new committee chairs across in, in lots of places. So it's it's going to be a very different legislature, a very different administration. And so uh, building that budget for the first time for them will, could be a challenge. So it's going to be an extended uh, orientation session for a lot of folks. I mean, first of all, you've just, you're still sort of in your second year of new quarters over there. So they're going to be new office assignments and new committee assignments. I imagine that first week, even though it's organizational, is going to be a little bit uh, chaotic, just everybody trying to figure out where everything is and, I think who, that's and exactly who everybody right. is. Uh, I know. I think that there's going to be a lot of meeting people in the hallway, a lot of people trying to find their new offices and figure out what their assignments are. Now, we, we had Glenn Cassidy, who's going to be the Speaker of the House when he's elected next week. Uh, he indicates he wants to see the House play a larger role in the budget making process. I suspect the Senate will feel the same way, but what is he talking about and what would the Senate be talking about? What would be a larger role for the legislature in the budget process? Well, I, I mean, I think that traditionally the the governor has been has produced a budget that then you know goes to the legislature to be uh, uh, for hearings, for consideration, for amendments, uh, as opposed to the legislature drafting the budget from from from, from the from the chamber. And it depends on what uh, speaker, what speak, what the likely speaker means by saying the legislature wants a bigger role. Uh, I could see ways in which that's good that the legislature is paying attention, but with this legislature, I could also see a lot of ways that could go sideways. You mentioned the numbers in both the House and the Senate. The Republicans still have a large supermajority. So, as the head of the Democrats in the upper chamber, what's a realistic role and goal for Democrats this year? I mean, look. Democrats uh, got the votes of 40% of Tennesseans. We have a lot fewer numbers than that in the legislature because the way that people are you have, located. You have five out of 33 seats. Right, it's in, 15%. In the so uh, we're gerrymandered into a place where we have a, a lot fewer votes, but we can't uh, take that lying down and pretend like we don't represent a big chunk of the people in Tennessee. Uh, I think that when it comes to people proposing good ideas, like we're going to be there to support them, to move them along. And when it uh, when it comes to people proposing things that are that are not good for Tennessee, that are advancing a narrow ideological interest, we'll join together with common sense Republicans to beat that stuff back. Such as, is that going to be once again in introducing legislation and trying to push it, although it'll be tough through the committees to uh, expand Medicaid in Tennessee? No, I think that, uh, look, the Affordable Care Act has been the law of the land now for uh, almost it get going on a decade. Uh, Democrats just took control of the House of Representatives, the law is likely not going anywhere. And it's about time that Tennessee just adopts to the reality and figures out the right way uh, to, to deal with this, which should be to expand Medicaid, which huge majorities of Tennessee in support. Uh, Governor-elect Lee is talking about kind of come up with some kind of health care plan in the future that will last for 40 or 50 years. Do you have any idea what he's talking about? Have you talked to him I about don't, that? I haven't talked to him about that. Uh, I don't know exactly what he's talking about. Uh, I mean, I think, look, the problems when it comes to health care are significant enough that there's good ideas all around. I don't think that, uh, I think that sort of pretending that Medicaid expansion and the Affordable Care Act is going to go away sometime is, is not a good pathway. Uh, your candidate for governor, uh, former Nashville Mayor Carl Dean, called Bill Lee to be very extremist on, on not wanting to expand Medicaid. Is that kind of the attitude you'll take with it in the legislature? I, I mean, I think that my, coming in? I, I, I sort of, I, I think that most Tennesseans know that uh, 
Bill Lee is a good man. I think that whether he's going to be a good governor remains an open question. And I am ready and willing to work with him and hope that uh, that, that he comes in with a plan that will work. What part of the open question, what, what are the reasons that you see him as an open question as far as being able to be an effective governor? Well, I think that one, he's, uh, this wasn't a campaign that was just littered with ideas and policy proposals. Uh, and two, he hasn't, doesn't have a lot of experience in, governor, in, in governing. That doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to do, do bad or have bad ideas, but it doesn't, doesn't mean the opposite either. What are your thoughts about the, uh, what he's put together so far in the cabinet? Several of those people that he, he keep bringing back are holdovers from the uh, Haslam administration. Now, this is the first time a Republican has succeeded a Republican as governor, so you might understand keeping more of those people, but it, what, your thoughts he's doing a pretty good job so far in his I appointments? mean, I think several, several, he's definitely has several holdovers. He's brought in some new people from his team. Uh, you know, I haven't gotten a chance to meet everybody and, and talk about what those roles are, but I, I, I'm, I'm generally encouraged and look forward to working. He, um, he has already appointed his legislative team, and some of those people are folks from his campaign. Uh, have they reached out to you as the leader of the, of the Democrats in the Senate, and what role do they see Democrats playing in, in working with them in the legislature? Yes, I mean, uh, we have spoken regularly with Governor Lee's team, uh, Governor-elect Lee's team, since the election. Uh, his team has been in touch. Uh, he's been in touch. And, uh, you know, I think that they, if, if, if the last Republican administration is in any guidepost, there are going to be issues where they desperately need Democrats to work with them. Uh, many of the things that Governor Haslam would celebrate as accomplishments are things that were, were only possible because there were Democrats that joined with uh, parts of the Republican Party. The, the gas tax and the road program. Gas one tax, in the several house. things. Uh, and but there were you know and other proposals that he was working on that where democrats were vital to to the to the to progress uh, let's go back to the, uh, the the medicaid program one of the reasons that probably would be harder to pass a, a medicaid expansion is you have this federal court ruling that says that obamacare is completely co unconstitutional ought to be stopped immediately uh, the legislature has been looking for reasons not to do this for a long time. That certainly would be a strong one for them not, not to give this any additional. Right. I mean, if you're just looking for excuses, that would be a new one. But I mean, I, you know, I think this is a place where Senator Alexander and I even agree that that is a, a judicial ruling that that's pretty weak and is likely to be overturned when it comes to appeals. I, I mean, I don't think that any that serious commentators think that the ACA is in is in real jeopardy. Uh, I do think it's really disappointing that we have the state of Tennessee being a party to that lawsuit that would take pr the protections uh, for pre-existing conditions away from you know millions of Tennesseans. The new minority leader of the Tennessee State Senate, State Senator Jeff Yarbrough from here in Nashville, is our guest. We're talking about the beginning of the 111th General Assembly, which begins next week. Back to continue our conversation after you watch these messages. This is